are listening to the Proverbs for Living a Fulfilling Life podcast. Hi, this is your host, Dr. Rick Upchurch. These proverbs come from a lifetime of experience. My goal in sharing them with you is to help you avoid some of life's pitfalls and hopefully give you some tools to live a more fulfilling life. I hope you will ponder the proverb in this episode and take away something that you can use. Episode 20, Stress. Stress will always, always, always find a way to express itself. That's an important thing to keep in mind. Stress might show up in weight gain or weight loss, nail biting, teeth grinding, illnesses, headaches, stomach issues, grouchy attitudes, depression, yelling, crying, even violence, etc. This is true no matter what type of stress you experience, good or bad, short-term or long-term, or the source of the stress. Stress will always find a way to express itself. Now let's talk about the source of stress. We typically associate our stress in several different areas. One of those areas happens to be our work. That could be the actual work we have to do. It could be stressful work. It could be the deadlines that we face or our boss or our coworkers. I remember once in my life, my boss uh, literally didn't want me to be there at all, but was unable to fire me for reasons uh, that I won't go into. So he just made my being there extremely stressful and I would go home at night and sleep and I would grind my teeth all night and wake up with the horrendous headaches uh, all stress related and all of that was building up so I this kind of stress does build up and it could be in other areas too it could be uh, and it related to our family with our kids for instance or lack of money, uh, lack of time, uh, maybe even our spouse or significant other. Our parents can cause stress. It could, it could be our car, literally anything. And, and money is one of the big factors as well. And I've said this in another episode, and I'll repeat it here. Sometimes family can literally drive you crazy. I know one of my children had the uncanny ability to push my buttons And even before I knew what was happening, I would be screaming and turning red in the face. Stress will usually evidence itself the same way in your life. For example, if you're overeating or nail biting, uh, that's the way it will come out. And it will come out the same way. And I've seen people whose nails were literally uh, bitten down into the quick and, and bleeding around the edges because of co- trying to cope with stress. Or you know people who, who try to deal with that in a long list of ways. Once you take the time to match up how you respond to stress, you've made the first step in managing your stress. And I would guess you already know at some level what your normal response to stress is. You probably already know that. Just think about it. Now that you've made that connection, the next step is to recognize when you're having that response and then reorient your mind to choose a different response. Step one, learn your stress signs. That's a big deal. Most people never really do that at a, at a conscious level. Yeah, they'll bite their nails. They know their nails are bitten, but they never really connect the dots. Step one, learn your stress signs. Number two, step two, change your response. There are a lot of healthy ways to reduce stress. There are as many of them to reduce stress as there are things which cause stress. One of the best, of course, is physical exercise. That's not possible for everyone, uh, but it doesn't have to be uh, elaborate physical exercise. You don't have to buy a lot of equipment. Uh, Simply walking around the block can do amazing things for your stress. Simple little things. Meditation. Prayer. Prayer can be an amazing stress reliever. Uh, Watching a movie, uh, especially one that's going to make you laugh. Talking to a friend. Taking a nap. Uh, Take a bath. Listen to some music. Just take some deep breaths if that's all you have to do. Read something inspirational like the Bible. Unfortunately, 
There are almost as many unhealthy ways to reduce stress that will eventually cause you even more stress, like overeating or undereating or alcohol consumption or taking drugs of some kind or uh, extramarital or premarital sex. These things can be stress relievers, but they can lead to excessive behavior that can literally be destructive. And then there are those who think they can simply repress their stress and force it into a box. I have to tell you, this might work in the short term, but it almost always has disastrous consequences eventually. Repressing stress isn't going to work. It's like I would come home from the job I mentioned earlier and think I had it all under control and I would go to sleep and my body would would relieve that stress through the grinding of my teeth all night long until I woke up so sore in my jaw and with headaches so bad, uh, it would it would just be devastating. But I had repressed it all day long, but it still comes out. Once you know how you react to stress, you have a better chance of noticing your reaction and taking the appropriate measures to reduce the stress. One thing for sure, you can never fully eliminate it, and it will always evidence itself in some way. But with practice, you can manage it so that it does not derail your life. Up till now, I've been pretty pragmatic. But if you will bear with me, I'd like to suggest that the root cause of stress in your life isn't so much that long list of what we usually associate with causing stress. For instance, our work, uh, our boss, our co-workers, our kids, lack of money, time, our, our significant other, parents, car, money, again I say. Uh, rather, the real cause of stress is our basic lack of self-awareness, especially in the context of our relationships. The concept of being self-aware is a fundamental part of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, unlike IQ, can be developed by anyone who is willing to take the time and the effort to examine themselves and their interactions with other people and situations. Self-aware people cope with stress better because they understand themselves better and have learned how to allow the stress to pass through them without destroying them. Partially using the techniques I mentioned earlier, but also because at a more basic level, their knowledge of themselves and their self-worth is not threatened as easily by the circumstances of life. Now, those circumstances are a part of everybody's life. Everybody goes through stress. But the self-aware person has a greater ability to contextualize those situations and move through them with greater balance and poise. How does one become self-aware? That's a bigger question, and I'm not going to try and answer that in this episode, but I'll give you a starting point. Ask yourself two questions throughout your day. The more you ask yourself these two questions, the better off you are. How am I feeling, and why am I feeling that way? Let me say them again. How am I feeling, and by that I mean, am I feeling frustrated? Am I feeling angry? Am I feeling betrayed? Am I feeling... Uh, you fill in the blank. And then go back and respond to why am I feeling this way? And don't take the easy answer. I'm feeling this way because of my boss. No. And, and this was my problem for so long. Why are you feeling this way? What is going on at a deeper level inside of you? Why are you having this? And, and take a look, not just at the external stimulus, but inside yourself to find the harder answer. The answer that's really making it cause the stress in your life. I'm going to be diving into this more in future episodes. Remember those two questions, though. How am I feeling? And why am I feeling that way? Thanks for listening to this episode. I want to encourage you to please subscribe and, if you don't mind, refer the podcast to a friend. In every case, 
The information in these episodes is merely the tip of the iceberg of information related to that specific topic. Do a little research, and I'm confident you will find more information. If you want to get a hold of me, you can reach me by emailing proverbs at upchurch-consulting.com. I'll look forward to hearing from you. If you would like to know more about God's Word or how God works in the world and in your life, I highly recommend checking out Wesley Biblical Seminary. This is a solid, accredited seminary with fully online programs at a reasonable cost. Best of all, in my opinion, WBS approaches the Bible from a Wesleyan holiness perspective that embraces free will. You can check them out at wbs.edu.